Hey guys, what's up? I'm Cam from the session team. And what if I told you that there was one simple thing that you could do that would dramatically decrease the chances of your online accounts being hacked? It's called two-factor authentication and most services offer it, but not by default. We're gonna run through how you can use it and the different types that are available to you. First up, I'm just gonna say that while there are different levels of security that these will provide you, any 2FA is better than no 2FA. This is probably the most common type of 2FA and also the simplest. Essentially, you receive a text message by SMS and then you enter that code in order to access your account. It's the simplest, but it's also one of the least secure. SMS, also known as shitty message security, is a fundamentally insecure messaging protocol and it's very vulnerable to attack uh, through SIM swapping, SIM spoofing, or just having your messages intercepted. You might also just change your phone number or lose your phone, which means that you won't be able to access any SMS 2FA codes. Last time I was overseas, I was using a different SIM because I was in a different country and there was a couple of times when I needed to use SMS 2FA and it really sucked. And if I lost that SIM, it would have really, really sucked. So just generally avoid this one if you can. If you want to learn more about SIM swapping, we've got a video about it and you can check out the link in the description. Okay, so it's probably pretty clear what this one is. It's the same as SMS 2FA, but using email. If you're using a secure and encrypted email provider like Proton, yes, this is an official shout out, hello friends, as well as a strong password and a unique password, then this is pretty watertight. But unfortunately, many people aren't. Many people actually use the same or similar passwords for a lot of different accounts. And if you do this for the service that you're logging into and your email provider, then you're basically f because whoever is trying to access your account can access your email and just get the code. So email 2FA is pretty good if you do it right, but there are some even more secure options coming up. There are some serious advantages to using a physical device for authentication, like a YubiKey. They're extremely tough to compromise. They have a very secure setup process. You can use them offline and they're very resistant to phishing and other social engineering type attacks. This is exactly why organizations like Google issue these kind of keys to their employees to secure their corporate accounts. If only they cared about the rest of us this much. The main drawback is really just having to carry around a physical object and use that to access your online accounts. There's also the risk that you'll misplace or even worse, lose it. And for these reasons, they're really only used for really high security situations and accounts that have seriously sensitive data attached to them. Next up is the humble push notification, which is a nice mix between simplicity and security. Essentially, you'll try to log into your account, you'll get a push notification asking if it's really you, and you confirm. These are generally pretty secure as long as your device hasn't been compromised. The main problem with push notification 2FA is that these notifications can easily just get lost in a sea of other notifications on your device. We've seen some studies that suggest that as little as two security alerts in a short period of time can cause the amount of attention that we pay to them to drastically drop. And the end result of this is that people just tend to say yes in order to get rid of the notification. So push notifications, not too bad, but just pay attention to them when you get them. Authenticator apps that use time-based one-time passwords are becoming super popular. And that's because they're really secure, really easy to use, and you can even use them offline. The idea here is basically that your authenticator app and the service that you're using share a secret key. They use this secret key to generate a code connected to the current time and this code will last for about 60 to 30 seconds. The best part is that this all happens on your device, so this code can't be intercepted. Another really cool thing about these apps is that a lot of them are password protected, which means that even if your device is compromised, your code won't be and thus neither will your account. That is, unless you're using Google Authenticator, which for some reason doesn't allow password protection. This is also a shout out, it's an anti shout out. Get out of here, Google. Overall, I think this is a really good balance between convenience and security. So that basically covers all of the different types of 2FA that you're most likely to run into when you're using any online accounts. Um, I just want to reiterate, any is better than none. So definitely pick one of these, but I hope that this has helped you to pick one that's right for you. And if so, then like and subscribe because we've got a bunch more coming.